you, you mentioned history, and, um, and it was a beautifully expressed idea that history is malleable like clay. Um, I'm very interested in the, the history that you were taught as a young man. At, at school, what kind of history were you taught? German history, Western <coughs> history, European history? No, it was a history starting with an Neolithicum, with a man in... in with, uh, <laughs> Came and, on, yeah. Yes, and it was going on, and it was Alexander the Great, and it was, uh, uh, it was in the Middle Age, and it was uh, uh, the Scholastic, you know, and it was, uh, it was going on and on, and uh, and then it was ended up with uh, Third Reich, who was a little, a little period too, mm. not enough. <laughs> so, when you went to art school, and when you produced those extraordinary. Diploma works, which are at the beginning of the exhibition, five out of the three out of the five, the, um, the heroic symbols. Um, there was a motive, a historical motive underpinning that work, partly. It, there it was, was a buried history. Yes, it was an emotion. It was, it was, uh, and it, it, I wanted to know something. So I, I had, when I was in art school, just before I had to do this for the for the for the diploma, I got a disc from from someone. And it was a disc who was produced by the Americans to, to learn the Germans uh, about the Nazis. And there was the voices of Hitler, of Goering, of Goebbels, and so on. And I was completely shocked, because I never had this, this um, physical experience, you know, with this. I, I, we had it two, one or two weeks in the school. It was told how much he killed, how much. But it was very abstract, you know. And when I had this voice of Hitler, for example, that it was so, it was such a shock. It was fascinating, it was horrible, it was all together, you know. And then I thought, I'm, I wanted to know something about this time, what is more direct, what is more emotionally, emotionally conceived. So it's personal as well as a more detached historical an analysis. It was something that had been buried that you wanted to resurrect. The, the gesture was banned in Germany, wasn't it? So yes, because you, you cannot understand something only with the intellect, you know. Um, you have to see something, you have to smell something, you have to, it has to be all your senses together. Then you have, you conceived it. If you learn in school, they killed six million, you know, what is, what, it's so abstract, it doesn't mean anything. If you see the, the pictures and all this, then, then you, you have a conception about it. What was the response of your fellow students and your tutors to those works? No, they were shocked because it was forbidden to, 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 to do the arm like this. It was, it was a law in Germany that you should not do this. And, um, and um, so they had a problem with me because I, I, I had to do a diploma, diploma, and I said to them, this what I did is very important, I want the best note, or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they had the problem. <laughs> and they gave you the best mark? Yes. Good. <laughs> I, yes. I quite like, there's a kind of liberal sensibility going on here, but at the same time, in a rather authoritarian way, you're telling your tutors what they must do and they, they obey. I think that's quite a, that's quite a nice idea. Um, so, I want to move to the 1980 Venice Biennale, but actually to think about the period before as well. And the furore that that generated in Venice, I'm curious now, looking back on it, what, were you, was it very much a feature of your, the response that people had to you in the 1970s, up to the 1980 Biennale? Was it always a controversy over your examination of the Nazi past in German history, a re reappropriation of myth and so on? Or is that just what history now tells us is the most notable part of that? No, I mean in 81, when the Biennale was... It was 80, uh, yeah. 81. 80. It was, it was 80. 80. <laughs> it's about history, you know. <laughs> well, you can reinvent it. It's fine. It's malleable. But it's... So then I showed things I did in, in, in the 70s, you know. And the furor, it was already... Yeah, the the, yes. four, the, the the controversy what was first in the in the in the uh, art school, you know, it was with, between my teachers and so it was um, was then because it was a biennale, all of a sudden public. 
Yeah. And then, yeah. So it wasn't a reflection. But I wasn't on the. I didn't. It was. I was. I was already further. Yes. I didn't stand anymore like this. You know, I was already further. And so the response to that, that Biennale, did that? Did you find that disturbing? Did it something you had to react to, or could you just continue as you would have done anyway? Oh yes, I, I continued. You know, I critic never destroyed me. It cannot destroy me. Um, it can help, you know. If the critic is really negative, it helps you because it, it evokes forces, forces in you, you know. And, um, and um, I was surprised, sure, but, but I was not destroyed. I remember you telling me that, in fact, America, and in particular Jewish American collectors, yeah. were the people who were most supportive in the early 80s after all of that furore. No, I must say, I did my career in America, uh, not in Germany. From 81, there was no one German museum, gallerist, or whatever, who wanted me. You know, there was nothing. And I did my career in America. Through the 80s, it was all Americans. It was Americans, collectors, most of them Jewish, who, who understood what I did, because they came from Europe. There was with all this culture from Europe and came to America and and... This was, um, this was my, my clients, you know. And your interest in and relationship to Judaism is an interesting subject because it, it continues. But did it flourish as a consequence of your historical analysis and work around Nazism? Because that was something no, that was No, it, it was more an accident. I was, you know, in, the, in 85, I think. You correct me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was in 85. I was first the first time in Jerusalem. I was invited by Martin Weil, the, the director of the um, Jerusalem Museum, in jo of the Jewish Museum in Jerusalem, yes. and he wanted to do an exhibition with me in the 80s. And it was interesting because the Germans didn't want that. They, had, they was afraid to, make, to bring me, which is my theme, to Israel. And then Martin Weil, he insisted uh, that I should come, and, and it was a big success, this show, than what I did in, in, in Jerusalem. And then I discovered through Martin Weil, the director of, of this museum, he took me uh, to the to Jewish quarters, and, and I saw the Sabbath, and, uh, and he, he made me um, interested in Gershom Sholem. And then I, I read all the books of Gershom Sholem, because that's so wonderful to read his Books, it's much more interesting than the scholastic, you know, because it's 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 filled with with flesh, you know, it's it's real, it's uh, it's the uh, it's the uh, emotion is there, the intellect is there, and the will is there. So so then I started I, I start to do to to study the Kabbalah and the Jewish Jewish mysticism or Isa Gloria and so on. Were you religious as a child? I mean, you were brought up a Catholic. Extremely, extremely Catholic. Yes. You know, I still now, I forgot all my, all, a lot of poems. I knew 200 poems by heart. I forgot them now with the age, you know. You will see when you... <laughs> <laughs> but I still have in my mind the, in, the, the, the Latin text of the, of the mass, of the, of the Catholic mass. It's amazing, no? And so you believed deeply in a Catholic God until what age? Yes, I, yeah, sure I believed. But then was the first communion. You, were, you know what it is? Yes. Yeah. And then I was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I was so disappointed. You know, I thought that then you get presents and things. You know, and I wasn't interested in this. I thought I get now um, an Erleuchtung, Illumin Erleuchtung, Enlightenment. Enlightenment. You know, nothing happened. You know, it was. <laughs> and <laughs> And, um, but I, I'm still interested in, in, in theolo theological um, problems, in scholastic problems. In the, yeah. And so your own relationship to religion is what, more analytical or detached? I mean, do you have a belief in the afterlife now? You know, I was, I, was, I think a month, month ago, I was in the CERN. You know what it is, CERN in, in, in um, Switzerland, yeah. in Genova. No, in Geneva. Geneva. Geneva, in Geneva. 
And they had a problem with the, the, Beschleun the Teilchen Beschleuniger. Was is it? What is this? Collider, the collider. So they had to open it and, and I could go down. Normally you cannot go down, it's radioactive. And I saw all this and, and there was a professor. Um, he said, you are older than the earth. Me. me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's because <laughs> in your body are little part, particles from the, from the beginning of the cosmos, you know? So, so you are composed of particles, you are older than the earth. But what was it? What was the question? Religion, so believing in the afterlife now. I saw, yeah, yeah. And so if you, if you see this, you, 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 it's clear you have an afterlife, you know? Little parts of you, they go on, you know? <laughs> no, it helps me. I can tell you. <laughs> It's a kind of Buddhism. No, no, it's, it is. it's a kind of 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 uh, was heißt wissenschaftlich, wissenschaftlich, scientific, scientific Buddhism. Yes. Yeah, I suppose, and also I suppose a form of sophism, maybe a form of sophism too. That it's no, when you when you go over this line, the sophism is gone. No? It's no more sophism. <laughs> then it's then it's you are you are here, here there or not? Do you think art has now, still, a religious dimension to it. Is, is, it a, is it a surrogate religion? Is it a parallel religion? It is, uh, you know, as an artist, you, you, you take the, the parts of the world, the particles, the, the protons, if you want. You take them and put them together in a new, in a new context. You, you create other molecule, molecules, if you want. And uh, to to create something new, what wasn't before there, that you can call it religion or religious. 